Hey guys, and welcome to TG10, Top 10 Real-Time Strategy Games. Space Marines are kick-ass. Ew, get that game out of my face. These Space Marines are kick-ass. These genetically engineered fanatical super soldiers have been kicking the crap out of alien life since 1987. Dawn of War 1 took our place for number 10. Not only was it the first time players had the chance to command these forces off the table in real time, but it also included nine very different factions to play, making it a fairly unique title. This game is still going strong, with an active modding community cranking out high-quality content for a game that was released in 2004. The granddaddy of the Supreme Commander series, this title was one of the first massive scale RTS games on the market. Released in 1997, it was one of the first games to have a built-in physics engine that governed particle effects, making explosions extra awesome. Lucky for us real-time strategy fans, the Annihilation series is getting another iteration from a Total Annihilation veteran in way of the upcoming game Planetary Annihilation, because fighting over continent-sized maps wasn't large enough. The Total War series has been one of the best strategy series to date. With its turn-based overmap, with grand decisions affecting everything from religion to who marries who, controlling spies and mercenaries, to the real-time battles with thousands of troops on the screen at one time, Medieval 2 was one of the best mixes of grand scale with micro-level detail. Now the question is, can they get Medieval 3 Total War out without it up? World in Conflict is set in a twisted version of 1989, where the Cold War turned into a shooting match. Soviet forces launched a surprise invasion of Seattle, Washington, and your job was to slow the invasion so the US military could mount a counterattack. This game released in the middle of my overseas tour with the United States Air Force, and I couldn't get enough of it when I had the downtime. Every unit had amazing detail. Playing as either infantry, air, support, or armor gave the player a great sense of combined arms tactics and made multiplayer a blast. I love space games. From the X series to Star Trek Armada, Homeworld, Galactic Civilization series, you name it. But Sins of the Solar Empire was the first to really get the real-time strategy right while keeping the epic scale of a traditional four times turn-based strategy game. Zooming in on the small-scale battles, then zooming over to a completely different fight with hundreds of ships, then zooming out even farther to control your empire built of hundreds of planets spanning multiple star sectors. This is what made Sins of a Solar Empire awesome. Having a great modding community helps too, and with lots of different mods already out and in the works, like Star Trek Armada 3, Sins of the Prophets, Sins of New Eden, Star Wars, Sins of a Galactic Empire. Sins of the Solar Empire is gonna be going for a very long time. In 2006, Company of Heroes hit the gaming scene hard, taking a buttload of awards. With its high level of detail in every single asset, this is one of the best if not the best World War II era strategy games. With a focus on fast paced decision making, worrying about things like putting infantry into cover, deploying machine gun nests, and positioning your tanks so its ass isn't hanging out for some AT soldier to rocketeer, add in an epic destruction engine that lets you reshape the battlefield with high explosives, Relic nailed it with this title, and it's one of my all time favorites. Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos is a high-fantasy, real-time strategy video game released by Blizzard Entertainment in 2002. 
With a fleshing out of the storyline for why these sides are fighting and a greater focus on narrative really made Warcraft 3 stand out. It didn't bring anything new to the RTS table at the time, but it did bring very tight gameplay mixed with well-balanced multiplayer, gave this title the longevity needed for the long term, and set the stage for another little title that came out by Blizzard down the road. Relic has a long history of RTS games. They've already popped up on this list twice with the Dawn of War franchise and Company of Heroes. But the game franchise they are most known for, the game they originally cut their RTS teeth on, is Homeworld. This fully 3D real-time strategy was outside the box with its ridiculous difficulty and addictive single-player campaign to its immensely enjoyable multiplayer facing off against another player. The Homeworld franchise has been sold to Gearbox Studios, who has already announced Homeworld 1 and 2 HD remakes and a new Homeworld game in the pipe called Homeworld Shipbreak, which has been announced and I couldn't be happier. The Command & Conquer franchise is the true granddaddy of real-time strategy games. CNC1 was based on Westwood Studios' Dune title with better balance and tighter gameplay. Command & Conquer Red Alert took what was learned from Command & Conquer 1 and cranked it to 11. The game takes place in an alternate timeline where Albert Einstein builds a time machine, goes back to pre-World War II, and removes Adolf Hitler from time. This event allows the Soviet Union to grow in power under Joseph Stalin, whose own ambitions of conquest make this alternate timeline a blast to play in. With unique units and really impressive, for the day, pre-rendered cutscenes, and the goofy live action acting, this title is on my list for best games ever. I love this franchise. I'm sure you guys saw this one coming. The universally praised series StarCraft is one of the best and probably most important RTSs. With the original StarCraft selling 11 million copies worldwide as of 2009, it's one of the best selling PC games of all time, having three completely different sides, each unique but balanced, grab players' attention. Multiplayer has been particularly popular in South Korea, where players and teams participate in professional competitions, earning sponsorships and competing in televised tournaments. I loved StarCraft II Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm, but StarCraft I had the tight gameplay, good story, and interesting setting that made it just epic for the time period. That's why StarCraft I takes the number one spot. Now I had a ton of RTS games on my list. The list ended up being about 25 long, but I had to narrow them down to top 10. So if you didn't see your favorite on there, let me know in the comments below, which one did I miss out on? What should have been number one? Should Command & Conquer been on there and not StarCraft? Because that was a close one. I wasn't sure which one I was going to pick. But the amount of hours that I put into StarCraft 1 versus Command & Conquer, which were considerable, I just had to go with StarCraft. The story is better. The setting is just more interesting, more engrossing. I love Command & Conquer's cutscenes. I played Red Alert on the crappiest computer of the day. I had to run it in DOS, and I would spend hours playing on dial-up. We'd get a phone call and I'd get kicked off. The good old days of online gaming. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below. What is your favorite real-time strategy game? What are your recommendations for TG10s? What lists do you want to see? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe here to TGN for more gaming goodness, or come on over to my personal channel, The XP Gamers, where we support the modding community. Well, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.